Do you ever head to the pool for a swim and stand on the edge of the pool and wonder, what on earth should I be doing? Well, don't worry, you are definitely not alone. So many swimmers just jump in the pool and swim back and forth without a plan. But if you're really serious about trying to improve your swimming and improve your performance, then this is definitely not the way you want to be training. You want to be following a structured and specific workout with a clear goal in mind. So today, I'm gonna to be helping you with designing and structuring your own swim workout. Now, as a very simple overview, a swim set should include all of or some of the following. A warm-up, a preset or drill set, a main set, a post set, and a cool down. But for most of us out there, and particularly for those time crunched amongst us, at a very minimum, you want to be including a warm up, a main set, and a cool down. Now, many of you out there are probably used to heading to the pool and knowing that you need to cover, say, 2,000 to 3,000 meters, but that's about it very often. Now, actually, just plodding up and down and covering that distance isn't going to make you the best swimmer that you're capable of. You want to be having structure in your session and really focusing on key areas such as your speed, your strength, your technique, and so on, all in the most efficient way possible to really maximize that use of all your precious time. So let's begin with the warm-up. So the aim of the warm-up is, surprise, surprise, to warm the body up, but also to mobilize the joints, wake the body up, and really get the muscles ready for that workout ahead. This is obviously gonna result in better performance during that workout and going forward, but also it's gonna reduce the risk of injury. So with that in mind, it's really important that you ease into a warm-up. So in fact, before you even get in the water, on pool deck, I'd really advise you do some arm swings just to mobilize those joints, Simple things like a single arm swing or even a double arm swing as you wrap your arms across your chest and outwards again. And then when you are ready, jump into the pool, but ease yourself in, build into it really gradually. Far too many people start off way too fast in a warm up. In terms of what you actually do in your warm up, well, I'd really advise you break it down into nice bite sized chunks rather than just jumping in and trying to do 1K straight. So something like 200 meters freestyle, take a 20 to 30 second rest, 200 meters pull, take a similar rest, 100 meters kick, rest, and then finishing with 100 meters drill of your choice. So that gives you a 600 meter warm up. but note that it's all at an easy aerobic pace. The pull work there is to isolate the arms and make sure that they're really warmed up and ready for the workout ahead. The kick is the same. The technique work is really there to enforce good technique prior to the main set and hopefully make sure they're carrying that technique forward into the rest of the workout. Now obviously 600 meters is plenty for most people out there, particularly if you're doing 2K or less for the entire workout. But if it is still quite punchy for you, then do obviously feel free to break that down into slightly smaller chunks and slightly shorter reps. But if on the other hand, you are planning on doing some slightly longer workout, 2K or more, then you're gonna to want to do a slightly longer warm up, something around 800 meters or so. Right, now into the meaty bit, the main set. But before we do so, just give yourself a minute or so to collect yourself, really make sure that you're prepared, you know what you're doing and what your goals are. Now, I like to break these goals down to four different types. We've got your aerobic endurance distance sets, we've got those speed sets, threshold sets, and then finally, we've got the technique and strength sets. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be doing all four different types in one week, but I would really advise that you mix things up and each swim has a different goal and a different focus but of course if you are planning on swimming three four or more times per week then of course yes you are going to start repeating yourself so what you actually decide to focus on and pick depends on a few things your current fitness level the time of the year maybe the time of your season if you are competing and your strengths and weaknesses so say for example you're fairly new to swimming or maybe just not feeling that confident in the water at the moment then you're going to want to do 
aerobic swims, you want to do technique swims, and maybe strength swims for good measure. But if you are focusing on an event and it's getting close to that race, then you're going to want to do a threshold swim in your weekly training schedule. That's going to really help you hone in on those race intensities. But if you have identified a weakness, perhaps you can swim at a nice aerobic pace all day long, but you lack that top end speed, then you want to include a speed workout to really knock that top end speed up. So that's really interesting, but how do we actually structure a workout? Well, let's start off with a typical aerobic set. So this might look something like one times 400 meters with 25 seconds rest, then into two by 200 meters with 25 seconds rest, and then finishing off with four lots of 100 meters, also with 25 seconds rest. So as the name suggests, this should be aerobic. You shouldn't be breathing hard through this set. In fact, it's somewhere around 65% of your maximum. And if you are looking to achieve or do longer distances in your swims, then this is the kind of set that you can start increasing incrementally. And now for that speed set. A good example that I've always enjoyed doing myself is 16 lots of 25 meters as every 4 of 25 maximum effort. And then all the others, an easy aerobic pace taking 30 seconds recovery between. Then 12 lots of 25 meters as every third max taking 25 seconds recovery. And then eight lots of 25 meters as every second max taking 20 seconds recovery. And then finishing with two lots of 25, all max effort taking 15 seconds recovery. So all in all, that's a 950 meter main set. And it's quite fun because it really focuses on that quality max effort with a nice long recovery to start off with. And then it reduces that recovery over time. But if you are starting out with these speed reps, it's something maybe you lack, then I would recommend starting with nice short reps. So you really do get that quality and really unleash that speed. But now onto the threshold sets. And these are possibly the least enjoyed because they really do push the body. The idea is that it's getting you to work at your body's threshold for a sustained period of time. And typically, we refer to a threshold in swimming as your best pace over 20 minutes. Now, of course, you can get an exact number for this threshold pace doing things like the CSS test, or you can just take a bit of a punt using some of your old times. Now, I would add, if you are fairly new to swimming or you just plan on swimming for fun, then this is not for you. But if you are looking to improve your performance, and further your swimming, then I would highly recommend doing these sets. A classic threshold set example is four lots of 100 meters at threshold pace, taking a relatively short recovery of 15 to 20 seconds. Then into one 100 meter easy, taking a longer 30 to 40 second recovery, and then repeating the set through one, two, or even three more times. Now you notice that the recoveries were quite short in this set and it does make it really quite tough, but providing you are working at your threshold pace and you're not going beyond that, it really should be doable. Although I will warn, it does bite a little bit towards the end. And finally, we're on to the technique and strength sessions. Now this is an opportunity to focus on your technique for an entire session. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I really recommend with technique work to just break this down into nice bite-sized chunks, nice short reps to focus on good quality quality technique and then you can just reset after those reps and then off you go again. Also the strength work, this is great during the off season. I like to do a lot of this. I'd include some pull work to really isolate and work the arms. And then you can also include paddle work and that will really emphasize that and really work on that strength. And finally, to finish the set, we have the cool down, which is the bit I know a lot of people skip out. I know that because I used to do it a lot myself, but honestly, it is so important to include. The reason being that it actually keeps the blood flowing and that helps to remove some of the waste products like lactic acid that can really pull in the muscles. And in turn, that's gonna help improve your recovery and allow you to back up those sessions day after day. Now, it doesn't need to be long at the very minimum 200 meters. I typically advise something like 100 meters kick followed by 200 meters swim. All right, I know there's a lot of information to take in there, so if you do have any questions, please do drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. But a final little tip for you here is that when you do have that main set or the whole workout, write it down on a piece of paper, bring that along to the swimming pool, and actually you can stick that to a kickboard by splashing a bit of water at it or alternatively onto a swim block, but just make sure you do remove it at the end of the workout because that will annoy the pool staff quite a bit. If you have enjoyed today's 
video, do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see our how to perform a CSS test, you can see that by clicking just down here. And if you'd like to see our how to swim freestyle video, you can see that by clicking just down here.